All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Explore Classroom. I am so excited that you are joining us today. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and today we've got an incredible show. But let's take a pause and talk about what's going on in the United States. It's February, which means we're celebrating Black History Month. It is important to recognize the contributions, genius, and history of African Americans all year round. But we want to especially encourage our viewers to dive into local, state, and national history this month. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. An Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. This school year each month will be organized around a specific theme. And in February, Explorer Classroom is exploring exploration. It is so important, especially when we think of it as a tool to better understand our world and how we can protect it. Today, our explorer is Florence Guppel. Florence is an award-winning photographer from Peru, which is a country in South America. She works in the Amazon rainforest and Andes mountains with the people indigenous to the area. That means that they and their families have lived in that area for a really long time, many generations. Flora shares her photos in magazines and online to help people understand the stories of those who live and work in the Amazon and the Andes. And today, she's going to share the genius of the farmers who plant a very tasty and important crop, corn, or as you might say on Espanol, maíz. But before we get into today's lesson with Flor, I wanna welcome our viewers who are tuning in from around the globe. Our registered viewers include Campbell Elementary, All Saints Academy, Sprouts Garden Preschool, Montessori Children's House, Hutchinson School, Palmer Elementary, and of course, our homeschool families and friends out there. We are so thrilled to have you. And with that, we're gonna turn it over to Flor to get Explore Classroom started to tell us all about corn and the amazing farmers who grow it. Flora, they're all yours. Great, hello. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and this way, okay. Great. So today I'm going to introduce to you my project about native corn that I made in Peru, which is located in South America. But first of all, let's situate, it, situate Peru. So this is North America and South America. This is the United States. So where's Peru? Just there in the South, here in red, Peru. So I started in Peru in my early 20s as a photographer, as you see, photographing some llamas and nice landscapes in Peru. <laughs> so the reason why I became a photographer is because as a child, I was super curious of my mother's camera. I used to grab her camera and go around the place. And maybe sometimes at night when we went out for walks, I would like to try to photograph the moon. I didn't succeed, but it was nice to try. And so um, I kept these memories alive in me. And when I became an adult, I decided to photograph, like in a professional way. But my first project is corn, not the moon. <laughs> so I would like to explain you why I decided to photograph corn. So my family comes from the mountains. They are migrants. So, which means that they migrated from the Peruvian mountains to the city of Lima. They left behind their fields, their corn, their potatoes, everything um, they used to grow in the land. So they will live in the city. I grew up in the city, but I grew up with the stories of my grandmother, the stories of my mother and all my ancestors. And I really liked it. It was really nice to hear these stories. 
There is one story my mom used to tell me about a group of students in the city of Cusco in the mountains that went to went for a nice trip between mountains. But one day they found a tunnel, a mysterious tunnel. And they decided to get into this tunnel. It was super dark, like no light inside. And they got lost. So the three students were lost inside this tunnel. But then after three days, they found their way out in the other side of the tunnel. So in the city, they came out of the tunnel, dirty, thirsty, a little bit starving, of course, three days there. And the most important is that one of the students had between his hands a very particular corn, a corn made of gold. So I grew up with this bad story my mom used to tell me, and I was super curious about it. Why is there a golden corn, or is it really a corn made of gold? So I went back to Cusco to ask the people there and farmers if this story was true or just my mom was just trying to tell me a lie. <laughs> But everyone told me this story is true. And so I was even more curious. How is it possible that there is a corn made of gold, right? And then I asked them, so where is it now? But nobody could answer me this question because nobody knew. So I asked myself, why don't I search for this golden corn? So this is how I started photographing corn. And before I tell you more, do you know what's the word for corn in Spanish? Some? Maybe some of you know? You want to raise your hand? Yes? You can tell me. <laughs> Great. So corn, it's called maíz in Spanish. Bravo. <laughs> And when I decided to photograph corn, I discovered even more stories about it. So I discovered there is a group of ladies that like to sing to the corn. When they plant the seeds, the little seeds of corn, they perform a kind of a ritual. So they get together in group of two or three people. So they start to sing. I will show you the song in the next few minutes. And This is something that made me realize that there must be a reason why they have so many species of corn, so many colors, so many sh uh, shapes, sizes, different corns. So until here, I couldn't find the golden corn, but instead I found out there was, there is more than 55 species of corn in Peru. Would you like to count them with me? So here's one. You see this color? Now, two. Another amazing color. What do you think about this? Do you think this is completely black or more like dark purple? You see many different colors, sizes, and shapes. Sometimes corn comes with different colors within one. You see, there is like kind of pink, but purple, but white too. A corn completely yellow, as you might know. What is this color, right? Is it like a red, orange? More like a fire color. Then pink again. I like this one. This is my favorite. Then a classic one. 
And then this one is just small like this. It's very small, looks like a baby. And it's like purple. He has like wrinkles. I don't know how to say it in English, but you see? Mm -hmm. But also I understood even more things about corn. I understood farmers have to work a lot, like at least 18 hours per day, so they can grow all these different varieties. But I also understood there are a lot of difficulties, like for example, lack of rain. So the, the earth gets really dry and it is, it's even more difficult for them to plant corn and to harvest it. In a lot of places in Peru, they work together with bulls. So you see, the bull is pulling like a piece of wood so they can open the land and it makes like holes and so people can plant seeds. So they work together, it's a teamwork. Another thing I understood is that farmers love their seeds. And this also explains why they have more than 55 varieties. They really take a lot of care. So they treat the corn seeds as if they were babies. So they cherish them. They take care of them. They put it in these fabrics and wrap it together like for babies. So they don't get cold, they don't get wet, right? It was really nice seeing this. So until here, I understood the positive parts, but also negative. As I said, sometimes there is no rain. But most important, what I want to show you is how much Peruvian farmers care about the land, how much they care about the seed, and the effort they put into this care, the effort they put into loving the land because they depend on it. Just as us, we eat corn. We depend on this food, it's super important. But they know even more because they grow it. They know how the corn behave. They know how um, or when it's time to harvest it. When is the good time to eat corn? And in order to make you understand better how they care about the land, let me show you a song. All right, I'm about to show the song. It's coming right up. Can you see it, Floor? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> There you go. We'll share it again. Oh. Just looking for my corn. Sometimes it hides at the top. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so. What do you think about the song? Did you like it? It was a very short one. Great. So in order to grow so many different species and make it survive for more than 8,000 years, yes, 8,000 years until now, right? <laughs> um, they found these very specific ways to care about them. Like, for example, the song I showed you. Have you ever shown so much uh, affection to a tree or anything in nature? Did you sometimes? Have you ever hugged a tree? <laughs> yes, great, great. So to become an explorer, to become a photographer, 
I understood there is like at least four things we should remember. Always to be curious about everything. Just like me, I was super curious about this story about the golden coin, right? I'm still looking for it. I haven't finished in my quest. So I will be back in Cusco and we'll still make a lot of questions like, where is this golden coin? Can I see it? Can I photograph it? Can I know more about this, right? The second thing to remember is to be empathic, to feel empathy. For example, um, for me to understand the, the reasons they grow corn and how they grow it, and to understand why there is 55 species of corn, which is a lot, I have to be empathic, right? To understand them, the difficulties, but also the positive parts. Everything is important. Another thing that is super important is to be always listening because every story is important. Not only mine, not only the story my mother used to tell me, but the story of everyone in this earth. The stories of every farmer, for example, is really important. And the fourth and last, but I think the list is even bigger, but I just wanted to share these four points. The last is self-confidence. Always be self-confident in what you want to tell, in how you want to tell it, and just go for it. So this is. <laughs> Do you have questions? Well, friends and floor, we've run out of time. I feel like I have so many more questions about corn, but Florence, we want to thank you for coming on today and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you guys for your nice question. You are such a great public, really. I want to thank all of our viewers, our students and teachers and families. You are a delight. I hope not only that you enjoyed yourself, but that you also get some popcorn soon and that you remember in your heart and your mind what you learned from Floor today. If you enjoyed today's event, I hope you'll register for our next ones. Our next event for ages three through eight will actually be in two weeks. Next Monday, we're taking a break because in America, we're celebrating President's Day. On Monday, February 27th, our pal explorer Justine Amendolia will come on and teach us how we can be garbage detectives. Hmm, I wonder what that means. So go ahead and register for this event and even more at natgeoed org backslash explore classroom. You can even get a chance to be a featured guest, just like we had on screen today. And fellow teachers, you have a chance to download an interactive guide and you can share one. We make one for every single episode. It's just for you and your students. You can also find the Explorer Mindset and Action Guide and a teacher edition linked on each of our registration event pages. Well, everyone, Corn, you believe it? We're done. Have a great day. Stay curious. Keep exploring. Bye.